Welcome back. You're watching Cyber Nation Mobile. I'm your host, Francis Rose. Agencies in the federal government and organizations in the private sector are trying to figure out what their remote work life looks like in a post-pandemic world. Establishing identity is just one important step in that process. Jeff Frederick is Senior Solutions Engineer at Ubico. Jeff, welcome. Thanks for coming on the program. The concept of, of securing the, the perimeter, as we talked about in the first part of this program, it's pretty much a dead issue at this point in time. What does mobile cybersecurity look like when people are working remotely, when people have multiple devices, and when the device fleets at various organizations look dramatically different than another similar type organization? The biggest problem is that the current authentication token that the government uses, the CAC and the PIV, just really doesn't work with mobile. It's just a form factor that's very unwieldy and difficult to use. So security keys like the YubiKey, for example, uh, have direct connections to mobile devices, iPhones, Androids, but also have the NFC capability. And those credentials on those devices can be equivalent in strength and security as a CAC or a PIV, but again, with that much easier to, to use form factor, which then enables all of your computing devices, uh, including your bring, bring your uh, own device and or work from home on a personal computer. Is there a risk that we're thinking about this in a way that's not intuitive? Is it possible that we're thinking about this as how do we replace the CAC and the PIV and we should be thinking about this maybe more broadly, more from an identity management perspective than just a technology next generation of technology type way? Absolutely. I mean, identity is the root of all access and security. Zero Trust, for example, relies on identity. So not only is that credential important for using your government uh, uh, data and accessing that, that those information systems, but it could also be used for more generic identity management capabilities. Uh, if you need to uh, request access for a new system, for example, using that credential to prove who you are because it is issued in a trusted manner and can be trusted to assert your identity for just about anything, not just uh, access to systems. What does the landscape look like for companies, organizations in the federal government or others to think about if they want to take that next step? I, I, we've talked in the first part of this program about the framework that exists today. And I want to think maybe a little more broadly than that. I, I, it strikes me that policy can be made to accommodate good solutions if those solutions are out there. Absolutely. The, the main uh, issue, I think, with modernizing authentication in the government is the policy. You know, it's we're relying on 20-year-old technology, the smart card, and it's really difficult to manage, maintain, and issue those credentials Newer solutions such as FIDO U2F and FIDO2 allow much easier uh, implementation, much easier issue credential issuance, and much, much easier day-to-day -day management. Um, and it also is that enabling technology for non-government you know, non equipment. So my computer at home doesn't have a CAC reader, for example. How do I use a CAC? FIDO is that solution. How will that work for people who are not technology? But what's the process? What will, what will someone's user experience look like differently at some point in the future? Well, I think this is a much easier process than uh, smart card credentials. So generally you're issued a token. Um, that token could be mailed to you directly at home. It could be issued from your HR department or your agency. And then you would register that token. So you would log into the, the registration portal and you would insert your token and touch it. And that would generate a specific public private key pair for that service. And then from then on, you're just going to enter your, or plug in your credential, your device into the computer and touch it and or enter a pin. So a lot of these complex issuance processes such as uh, I'll, I'll pick on DOD for a minute. The purebred issuance process for their derived credential is, is very difficult and unwieldy. Um, the, the FIDO technologies, these newer modern technologies, really simplify that process for both the end user and also for the admins or, or, or system IT people because the, the, it's designed for ease of use. It's designed for uh, end users to do this themselves, not require a, a, a administrator or an IT uh, security person to help you do, do the registration. So a theoretical, if I might, 
um, your agency hires me, I come to work for you, I work there for a period of time, I decide I'm going to move on. What happens to my credential? One of the things we've seen at agencies, GAO reports, Inspector General reports, agencies are not as good as they could be at calling credentials back when somebody no longer needs access to their networks. What does that look like under this kind of a system, Jeff? I think these new modern credentials are much more tied into the identity management systems. So as I offboard as a general process, that system would reach back to the identity provider and say, okay, revoke the credential for Jeff Frederick, he's now left the organization. The PKI world is very disconnected from the rest of the agency, as opposed to a, a FIDO type credential, which is much more in the workflow of, a, of an identity management system for onboarding as well as offboarding. Are there security gains in the, during the life of that person's tenure in addition to that gain of being able to move people off a system uh, in a timely manner? Absolutely. So a couple pieces. First is um, these new modern credentials are specific to every system you register with. So if you register with one or two or three or more identity providers within your agency, each credential is separate and distinct, so it's a separate public-private key pair. Smart card and, and PKI is a great solution. It's got its challenges, but it has one set of public-private keys for all things that you support or you register with or use it with. Um, so you can uh, easily manage a credential for each system and ensure if that system is compromised, the entire uh, security key is not compromised, just that one particular key pair for a single system. How does this work from, uh, from a, a kind of a progressive point of view? Is this an iterative thing? Is this a technology that will change over time? One of the criticisms of the PIV CAC is pretty much works the same today as it did in 2008 or whenever IPv6 was originally stood up, the, the technology doesn't really evolve. Is there potential here for evolution? Absolutely. So um, the FIDO Alliance, which manages the standard for FIDO, um, has already issued a, a revision two of the FIDO spec and 2.1 was just ratified. So that will be coming out and new capabilities have been added at each revision. Um, it is driven by a standards body, so it's not like it's one company that is that is making these decisions. It's the industry-wide uh, decision process. So as more capabilities, more secure capabilities, or additional functionality is required, it can be added as needed and involve the specification. Beyond identity management, Jeff, what are the challenges that practitioners are up against, uh, like Alex, who we met in the first part of this program, what are they up against in a much more fluid environment than they have been in the past? Well, number one is issuance remotely. So the current um, FIPS 201 and, and DOD CAC issuance process require an in-person um, uh, proofing, an in-person identity uh, issuance process. That process now can be streamlined and the ease of use of the FIDO credential in that process is, is orders of magnitude above the current uh, PIV and CAC process. So, um, you know, I can be at home, I can be sent a credential, I can go through a number of processes remotely to register that credential, and then away I go. I don't have to show up at an office or try and do a remote issuance, which isn't officially allowed today for, for CAC and or PIV. What do you think moving forward, the, the future of the, what are the possibilities? You talked about the evolution a minute ago. What are the possibilities um, that maybe practitioners want to do today but can't yet and might be able to in the future? So the um, bring your own credential. You know, I'm issued a credential from my government agency. What if I could bring my own? So I might use that same credential for my a citizen to government for my property taxes or my driver's license. Use the same key to use uh, for my employer to do my job. Use the same key for the IRS to issue uh, my tax refunds and get to my data. So, you know, the, the, the ubiquitous single device for all of your requirements that is secure and specific across the board, um, I think is one of the major benefits of the, of the new modern authentication protocols that are available. You mentioned bring your own. Speaking of that, you uh, alluded to bring your own device earlier in our conversation, Jeff. That was a really hot thing, I want to say 10 years ago in the federal government. 
it had its day and it seems to have disappeared. Is this type of credentialing something that will allow that to come back because an agency can have confidence no matter what I want to access information on, the data will stay secure even if it's not a government device because of the way that I'm accessing that data by having to use this type of identity credential? Absolutely. So you, you've got a number of pieces of that puzzle. You've got the zero trust infrastructure that allows you to trust people on a regular basis and, and continuous trust. You've got the virtual desktop interface solutions that are now viable. Um, so there's no data spillage onto my phone when I'm accessing my government data. So all of those things combined, I think we're now hitting the, the real sweet spot for the, the bring your own device. And of course, the COVID uh, pandemic and working, everybody forced to work from home seemingly overnight has really accelerated the push. We are seeing quite a few government agencies come to us and ask, how do we enable bring your own device or mobile telework uh, in these uh, unprecedented times? What else are they coming and asking you in those kinds of conversations, Jeff? I'm sorry, say that one more time. What else are they asking you when they're coming to you with those kinds of needs? How do we issue these things? How do we actually get them in the hands of users, whether it's through the uh, uh, mail system, through some other kind of um, physical delivery of the token? And then how do we strongly and securely make sure that that individual is who they say they are when they register? So the identity proofing concept, we work with a number of uh, remote identity proofing vendors to help facilitate that process. Um, those are the two big main issues. What other problems are people bringing to you as a result of the pandemic? Are they dramatically different than they were uh, before February, March of last year? Or has the, has the pandemic really changed the nature of the, the big problems that people bring you? I think prior to the uh, COVID pandemic, we were generally just dealing and used to the, the old, I'll say the old existing processes and nobody questioned them. Now everybody's really rethinking, hey, how do we do this better and how can we do this better? And, you know, the government's a huge ship and it takes a long time to make a turn, but NIST and uh, various government organizations are looking at the, the guidance that exists today, 863, FIPS 201, and saying these this guidance doesn't meet our needs anymore. How do we update it? So we're actively working with NIST on both of those uh, guidance documents right now. They've asked for industry feedback on how things can be done better and more securely while facilitating these new um, remote working and bring your own device technologies that really are going to be uh, the future. We, we can't work the old ways we used to. We've got to uh, enable these new technologies and new capabilities. We have less than a minute left, Jeff. Are there questions that people in agencies or other organizations should be bringing you that maybe they're not asking? <clears throat> I, I think the biggest question is, can we do this? And how do we do this? I mean, most folks are thinking, hey, we, we need to issue these remote PIVs. No, we need to look at the new technologies and see where they're appropriate today and how we get to them in the future. Um, because like I said, we, we know that the old technologies just don't meet the requirements anymore. So, you know, forward, look forward and think about how um, these new technologies can be best utilized today while making that tra transition from the old to the new. Jeff Frederick of Ubico, thanks very much for joining me today. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, appreciate the time. And thank you for watching Cyber Nation Mobile. Track more trends at govmatters.tv slash cybernation and w2comm.com. For the Government Matters Thought Leadership Network, I'm Francis Rose.